well, we don't understand the Ibishas has is of good. My son uh, actually sent me, you know, sent me a picture of him saying an imam, in which we're saying for many years. I'm saying it, my kids are saying it, not because we force them, so that's just the way we do. We just keep on believing. Doesn't mean, you know, it says an imam and not an imaven. And uh, unfortunately, once we did get the confirmation, which was around 9.30 wow. Friday morning, and that's when it was confirmed. And but I don't say what kept me going, because nothing really can keep you going. I was saying it to my kids, and I was repeating it to myself. We can't understand, I'm just, it's running the world, we don't understand, we're gonna figure, you know, we can't figure it out. It's gonna go one step forward, one step forward, and I say two years later, uh, still haven't figured it out and I'm not trying, so. Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Meaningful People podcast. We have a really amazing episode here for you. We sat down with Mr. and Mrs. Steinmetz, incredible people, strong couple. Um, they went through, them and their family went through such hard times, losing their son, Divi and Mayron. Uh, and they're doing so much after that uh, to increase the level of Amuna, Bitachan, and belief, the Rani Maman uh, initiative. Um, there are many different ways that we, we find guests here on Meaningful People. I want to give a big thank you to the people who made this episode happen. Yaakov Schwab, Benjamin Sharf, Avi Sales, Pesach Has, Dovi Karp. The Prague boys who spent some time in Prague with the Steinmetzes. Um, thank you for making this episode happen and suggesting this amongst a bunch of other people. It's really best, sir. Um, but this is an amazing episode. There's a lot of meaning here. And um, I hope you I hope you enjoy. Obviously, it's it's a little bit of a sad story, but there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot to take away, especially during these times, the nine days, Tish above. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this episode. A big thank you to our friends at Albert and Associates. I was in Moshe Alpert's office just the other day and I was looking at the portfolio he did for me and I'm like, man, this is looking really good. You know what you're doing. He has a great team. It's not just him. He has an amazing team behind him, um, but he's running an amazing show over there at Alpert and Associates. So you need to make sure to call Moshe Alpert, whether you want to invest money, 401k, retirement fund, custodian fund for your child, Sadaka account or life insurance. We spoke very often about life insurance here on this podcast, how important it is to have life insurance. Call Moshe Alpert at 718-644-1694. That's 718-644-1594. Or send them an email at albertmoshe at gmail.com. You will be happy. I guarantee it. Anyways, enjoy this episode. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. Um... We're here to to help you share your story and your mission today. Um, for anyone that that may not know you or know your son, Tzchana Lavracha, I think that we're in a in a time of the year right now where we are very aware of loss, and as we live in Gullus and as we're Metzapeli Yeshua and we await the ultimate Geula, I think it's very important for us to shed a light where loss exists and what people do with that loss. How do people transform that into light and ultimately bring the gula? And I think that your life's experience is very unique in your ability to shed that light. So if you can, if you can tell us a little bit about yourselves and, and how this became part of your journey. So uh, people don't know me. My name is Shlomi Steinmetz. We live in Montreal. We uh, grew up with a house full of boys. Davi was our third son. Uh, one daughter, Sasha. So we have five boys and one daughter. So we had an action packed home. Um, up until two years ago, you know, I'm in business and we're doing everything we have to do. But Hashem had other plans and my own happened. Don't have to give you the history or backstory that unfortunately was a life world life changing event for everybody even before we found out that we were unfortunately personally involved it was I mean I know before it happened it was uh, my, I, my stomach was a nut saying something like this could happen on like Bohemia it's such, it's such a holy place and a holy day it was now, at that point, we even got two confirmations that uh, the people saw Davi. They heard of him. So I wasn't nervous necessarily so much that Davi, that we didn't get hold of him because all the phones were down. 
Or just you a, know that he had plans to go to Miron. No, we knew he. We knew he that he was so. going to. We knew that he's going to Miron. Uh, we had two sons in Miron. Mm-hmm. We had a married son and his wife in Miron, and Zavi was in Miron as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So we knew. I mean, all, Zavi was my third son going to Israel. Going to they were learning in the mirror, and like boy in Miron was definitely a highlight. Uh, most achieved book from being there. Yeah. I mean, being together with a hundred thousand Eden and 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 davening and singing and, and it's just it's it's a it's a special. I mean, I was there thirty years when I was a yeshiva. It's and it wasn't how it is today. Then there was what maybe five ten thousand people. So, and Miron at any time of the year is a it's a different dimension. It's a it's a spiritual place. You have to understand, you know, when Miron happened in twenty twenty one in Montreal, we were still in lockdown due to COVID. Oh, wow. So we were watching Miron and we were like, we were so amazed because the year before there were what? Not even a million of men who were there. So for us, it was like, wow, the world had opened up. We were still in lockdown. We were watching on our tablets, on our computer screens. We were living vicariously through our kids who were in Miron and living it up, living the life that we were just, we were so jealous. Like, wow, we wish we could be there. I mean, we were literally under lock and key. We were living with rules and regulations that nobody else, except for Canadians, this is Canada, were living. Right. This wasn't Lake was New York. Right. This is Canada. The so tri-state we- area, nobody could comprehend what you still have curfew. Yeah, we still had curfew. After eight o'clock, we were not allowed on the streets. Wow. So I was we, following you through Sully Bester status. Right. It was <laughs> it was utterly ridiculous. And here we were. Watching our children in Mayron, hundreds of thousands of Jews were gathered there. It was so exciting. At the same time, if anyone recalls, there was the Hatzalathon, where you had all the mega superstars singing. Yeah. And it was so exciting for us. And then you had Mayron. And then all of a sudden, you had darkness. The entire world went dark. Like, what, what's going on? And I just remember... I shut my computer. I shut my tablet. I was like, I'm, I'm not even watching this. I can't look because I don't want to know. And I happen to have a group of we're 10 women or 12 women. And we learn living with the Muna every single night. And every single one of us at the time had a child learning in Eretz Yisrael. And all we kept doing was checked in, checked in. Every one of us had a child. And we all kept saying checked in. And we went about learning our regular living with the Muna that night saying checked in. And I also said checked in because my kids had checked in. At least one of them had. And the, the other one, Davi, we had had confirmation from other people that he was okay. Only he wasn't, but we were going on everyone else's words that he was okay. And then the night dragged on and life was never the same. Our world as we knew it, from that night on, was forever changed. It also must have been a, an extreme roller coaster of emotions, you know, because we mentioned in the outset this was a tragedy that didn't touch one family, it touched 45 and hundreds. Well, it was 44 families. Yeah, 44, because, yeah. 40, yeah. 43 families, because unfortunately two families lost two kids. Yeah. And... But like I said, like you're saying, it's 43 families, 45 kadosh. But it was an international it, 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 tragedy. It happened it was on an international level. level. Yeah, and and for you, it must have been such a roller coaster because you had you had that confirmation. Okay, like no, we didn't have. We you, waited. You, you, you had heard from from a friend, right. someone that they saw someone, right? Init- so initially, everything, and then as the night was dragging, and then like you know, by now, maybe you should get a hold of somebody's phone. It's here in the bar. You're talking about somebody who's six foot four. The Israeli army can detect Arabs in little foxholes. <laughs> yeah. Like, really? They couldn't find him? He's six foot four. Where is he? He yeah. had his passport in his pocket and they couldn't find him. They, they couldn't, like, locate him. That didn't make sense. They can find anyone. It's the Israeli army. Right. They know everything before anyone knows anything. They're the greatest army in the entire world. They couldn't this locate is, my this child. Is, this, is, this is what Hashem wanted. I mean, we were calling hospitals. We had friends who, were, who came over to the house. And I mean, I, call, I got a hold of one hospital. So I said, I told my wife, that I said, he's going to be the most wanted person in Israel by the time we find him. Yeah. I kept leaving uh, messages. At that point, I was saying, okay, Metro Shem will find him. Maybe he's in the house. He got injured. We don't know. It was such a balagan that was going on. 
But uh, it's hard for anyone to fathom the Balagan. Pe- people were seeing what was publicly reported, but to have experienced it personally, trying to connect with someone within the Balagan, I, I, as I sit here today, these years later, I, I can't even it fathom boggles, the It chaos. boggles the mind. It doesn't make sense. The disorganization. I mean, you're talking about a country that's so tiny, but I mean, when you go through security at the airport, you can bring liquid, you can bring anything. They just look you up and down and they know terrorists, not terrorists. I mean, when you go through airport security in Newark or LaGuardia or JFK, you can't take liquids, you can't take anything yeah. because- You can bring toothpaste. Right, you can't bring anything, right? Because <laughs> God forbid, you're gonna blow up the plane. But in, yeah. in Israel, they just look at you and they know. And yet that night, the, the disarray, the disorganization, I mean, their world, their country was so upside down that yeah. they, they couldn't find my child who was six or four. I mean, where was he? And they kept saying, there's a list. And if he's not on that list, then he's alive. But there were two lists. And we just don't understand. I mean. We, try, we can't understand. Yeah. So as the night began to unfold. As the night began to unfold, we didn't. We didn't I think it was the longest night of our lives. I remember at uh, around uh, 4, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, I got a hold of one of his friends that was with him. L.A. actually, he called me back and asked me. He was so lost. Obviously, he was, he was traumatized by what happened, and he didn't know what happened to Davi, but he was like, and that's when it's, by me, it's alarm bells started uh, going off. I said, my, my oldest son went to, lives in Muncie. He went to the Rimnitzer, and we dumbed nets. I went to the Mikvah quickly. Now, you know, we said, you know, we're just going to do everything we can. My wife is busy, too. you know, everybody's dominating them. Whoever, it was like you're saying, we're going for a roller coaster of emotions because you don't know where you're going. Up and, you, you have so much hope, and I said, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. At this point, well, we don't understand the Ibish of Hasboinus of good. Exactly, yeah. But um, my son uh, actually sent me, you know, talking about the Animam, which we'll get to soon. Send me a picture of him saying an imam, which we're saying for many years. I'm saying it, my kids are saying it, not because we force him, so that's just the way we do. And we just keep on believing. Doesn't mean, you know, it says an imam and not an imaven. And uh, unfortunately, once we did get the confirmation, which was around 9 30 Friday morning. Wow. Friday morning. Exactly. Yeah. And only, and only, that's, that's, when, that's when it was confirmed. And what's. I don't say what kept me going because there's nothing really can keep you going. And I, I was saying it to my kids and I was repeating it to myself, not just like this. I said, the Ibish Tefida felt. The Ibish Tefida. I just kept on saying, you know, Hashem runs the world. It's not, we can't understand. And just, he's running the world. We don't understand. We're going to figure, you know, we can't figure it out. We're just going to go one step forward, one step forward. And you say, two years later, uh, still haven't figured it out and I'm not trying. So. The, the power in that sigh that you just uttered of the two years later and everything that comes with that exhale is, is so striking to me because people use the expression, the and God runs the world, and people use it almost you know, flippantly as applied to you know, very mundane things. And of course, the Ebrister is running every single mundane aspect of every single molecule in this universe, without yeah. question. But the, the avoida of, a, of applying that to a reality that is so baffling and so difficult to accept, that, that reframe of not animamen, not animaven, animamen, that is, that is such a powerful work. It's part of his DNA. Honestly, it's, it's, not, it's not natural for most people. And I've said it so many times. You know, I've spoken, I, 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 I've spoken in public, and I always say, it's not natural for me. It's not part of my DNA. I'm a work in progress, a very slow work in progress. But for my husband and for some of my children, and for Dovey especially, it's just part of their genetics. It's part of their DNA. It's who they are. It's like 
the air they breathe. It's, it's so natural. It's something that I'm so jealous of because it's so, it's not easy, but it's so not easy for me. Like, how do you say that? Like, I want answers. Yeah. I need answers. I'm not, I, I'm logical. I need to understand. I, I need, I need a reason. And for me, it's so, so hard. And he accepts. And for me, it's like, why? I'm not as smart as my wife. <laughs> it's not a matter of smart, you know. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, we started this Animama initiative and, you know, we'll get into it. But um, this year, and it, it's exhausting. I'm going to be very honest. Speaking and, 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 and doing everything, Lila Nishma Stavi, it's utterly exhausting at times. And, and you don't always want to do it. And this year... We were lucky enough to meet Rav Shimon Gale, who I'm sure many people have heard about him. And I honestly didn't know much about him. But we had been at a wedding in Lakewood, a family simcha, and we met him. We saw him, and my husband said, let's go get a bracha. There were about 500 people. It was in Lake Terrace. And if anyone has ever been there, it, it's a mob scene. Rav Shimon Gale, like, Everybody wanted to see him, but my husband managed to get to the front. No, six for five. Yeah, <laughs> six for five, exactly. No one's going to fight with him. And he got to the front and he uh, told her, Shimon Gale, you know, my name is Shlomi Snaimitz. He spoke to him in Hebrew or, or Yiddish. My son was Nifter in Meiron. And it was like Kriyas Yamsov. All of a I, sudden. I, I, said, I, I want the, the Rebbe to give me a bucha to have koyach. That's all I asked. So and the Rebbe is going to give me a bucha He asked me, give me a Rebbe it was like Kriya yeah, like, Siamsa. I didn't think he was going to ask me for my Rebbe. So, so like, I, I was I, such a thing. So I, I, I motioned for her to come. And like, and she came over. 500 the men split the sea for me. <laughs> wow. And I, I got to see Rosh Hashim and Gale. And then he told my husband that when we were in Eretz Yisrael, we should come see him. So we went for the yard site this year. And Rosh Hashim and Gale was on, quote unquote, vacation. If, if it's sadic like him can actually go on vacation. Now, like I said, I didn't really know who Roshim and Gale was, but from what I had heard, he was a man who had vision. He had Ruach HaKodesh. He was an Adam Gadol. So I figured, you know what, for almost two years now, I'd been seeking answers. I've been searching. I, I needed some sort of clarity. And I told my husband, we have to go see him. I, I just, I need some, some, some Menuchas and Nefesh. I need to be able to go to sleep at night. I just need some answers. So... We called and we got an appointment. He was by his son in Kirat Sefer. And we drove about an hour to Kirat Sefer to see Rosh Shimon Gale. And we get there and his daughter-in-law answers the door. And, and Ifrit says, why are you here? I think to myself, oh God, mm. why are we here? We have an appointment. And she's like, he's not seeing people. And I'm like, um, we have an appointment. And, and in typical Israeli fashion, she of course invites us in with all her children around her and she's cooking and I'm I'm mortified and we sit on the couch and then two other people come and I'm okay, fine. It's almost our turn, right? Rev Shimon Gale is gonna come home for, from Davani. And I figured we're the first people there and he's gonna see us and I'm anticipating I'm finally gonna get the answers that I'm waiting for. Cause this is the end of the road. If he doesn't have the answers, no one else is. And he comes into the room and it's not our turn. <laughs> well, we were the first ones there. And we How go. People we decided to interrupt. It was like Rosh Hashim. It was like, like, like. Great know, people. Great people with long beards. Longer than mine. That's the <laughs> Anyways, so we go to the kitchen and Rav Galei sees the first person and then he sees the second person and then it's our turn. And my he's sitting at the head of the dining room table, and my husband sits down next to him, and I sit down next to my husband. And Rav Gale tells me to go sit at the other side of him. And I, I'm like, I, I sit at the other side of Rav Shimon Gale? Like, it's so odd. Like, I thought, oh, maybe a lack of sneeze or something. But no, he, he says he wants to be able to hear me, and I should be able to hear him. And I know right away that I'm really in the presence of greatness. It's such a tangible feeling. Like you really know he's not an ordinary person. And you feel the harvest his soul that he has, like just yeah. he, he loves you. It. it radiates he, from it his radiates. face. Yeah, it's it, you're just and I knew that, oh in in my in my mind, 
I'm going to get the answers. You're about to get the... Uh, right. I'm going to... Like, someone is going to give me the answers. I've been waiting close to two years. It's right before Lagba Omer, the yard side of my son. Someone has the answers for me. I've spoken to every Rebbe, you know, the Belzer Rebbe, the, the Bial Rebbe. Like, I've really... I, the Vision Rebbe, I've spoken to so many, and so many great people have called me. No one had answers, but Rav Shimon Galei, he... We're at the end of the road. He has the answers. And... He asks my husband, do you want to speak to me in Avrit or in Yiddish? And my husband says, Yiddish is better for us. So he turns to my husband, do you have any questions? And my husband says, my wife does. <laughs> Smart guy over here. <laughs> so it's, it's my turn. You speak right? Yiddish also? I, yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay. So um, I, I said, why? 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 Why did this happen to my son? Why did this happen to my family? Why did this happen to me? Why? It was like basically a one word question, like it kind of encompassed everything. Like, why? And he turned to me with tears streaming down his face and he answered, Ich weiß nicht. I don't know. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. You're supposed to know everything. Like, you don't know? How, how? like in my mind, he was, he was my last resort, my last, I haven't slept in two years. How, how could he not know the answer? But in my, in my heart, I really kind of knew he didn't have the answer because there's no answers. Yeah. But I, in my mind, like my mind and my heart were not connecting. And when he told me that, it was like, I was so deflated. I was like, the ear was let out of the balloon. Like, I was like, no, I, I did not travel here. I did not come to Eretz I did not wait for this appointment. I did not come all this way to hear, I don't know. And I was like, can't be. And then he continued, and he says, but I want you to know you have a mission. I'm like, really? Mm. Now you're giving me advice? Like, I mean, now you're telling, like. Now give me work. <laughs> like, seriously? You started something. You started an Animamim initiative, and now you have to continue it. This is your Echrayas. And I told him, I said, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I don't have the energy. He says, you started something. This is your job. This is something you have to do. And I'm like, no. But he, he didn't let he didn't let let go. He's like, no. This is your mission. This is your job. This is your achrayas. And every time you get up and you speak and you do and you give out a card or you you mention it or you continue this, it's an aliyah an aliyah neshama for your son Davi and. You don't have a choice. And that's what he left us with. No answers, which I kind of knew, but I didn't want to accept and still haven't slept. And that's why we're here. Marching orders. Kind of. Yeah. Going back to the cards that she just brought, we printed yeah. over 200,000 cards. Wow. We'll go back to the beginning of the story to show how it started, because I'm not taking credit for me. I'm just, I wish have made it happen. And then, this is Aruv and Al Shuwa Adam. said the first Shabbos we got up from Shiva Erev Shabbos. Every, he talks for five minutes before Mersav and he says, What can we do in Davis? Because the whole, you know, the whole shul is broken, the whole world is broken. So let's say, Animam, whoever doesn't say, should say, the ones who say, have in mind, takes 90 seconds. And he gave out cards to the whole shul. And that was it. Not to Shabbos, I think. The this, is, this is the, the Animam. The Animam. Say, the 30, after 30, say after in the morning. whenever you want. It's, it's like okay. literally 90 seconds to say. And the more you say it, I feel, the more you say it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go into your bones. Because it's just, I said it by the Aguda Convention I spoke two years ago. And it just came, it wasn't on my speech prepared, but I said, stuff around backing in the binder. And, you know, my, people weren't really doing it to Yiddish, but just, just, it came to my mind. It's going to be baked into your bones. And so it much helped. better. I'm, 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 I, I, as a, <laughs> Everything so much is, better. You know? it's, it's, there's something uh, about the language. Yeah. As a, as, a per, as a personal, uh, you know, pers I mean, I, on a personal level, I went for a tragedy of this magnitude. I can tell you that it helped. And I can tell you now that the hundreds of thousands of people which are saying it and people are coming over to me, which I don't know, random people. I'm getting messages or people that meet me and they say, you know, it really helps us. Uh, it, help, it gives us chizuk. So is the message. A, is this is spare copy. This is this is Can yours. This, this is this is yours. Devout. And we this have. We'll, uh... It literally takes ninety seconds of your time. And honestly, like 
you know, we always say, you know, they say fake it till you make it. It's like <laughs> faith it till you make it. Like yeah. you don't even have to like nice. honestly believe. It doesn't matter where you're holding in your faith. Just say it because eventually it's going to seep in. And so, it doesn't matter how Starting far we, when, when, when we started, right? So he, he printed away 100 people having in our shul. So I said, let me see if I can get 1,000 people by next Shabbos and 10,000 after that. And then we'll see where it goes. We hit 10,000 that following week. We called all my friends, contacts, cousins, schools, yeshivas, camp, whoever. I mean, this, is, this happened in June. He was on a mission. So it was like already. And so I started printing. So I printed 5,000 and I printed 10,000. And, you know, I'm printing four more. Today I'm printing 15,000, 30,000. I mean, whatever's needed. We already wow. we translated into, I mean, we have an English translation, Yiddish. French, which we'll talk about French in a more extended uh, in a We're second. <laughs> I want to I want to ask you, um, I guess a little bit a little bit about about Dovi and and who he was when he was down here in this world, what he represented. I I, I didn't know him personally, but you know, mutual friends. And Can I just tell you something, please? He was the most regular, normal child in every respect. He was not. Like, not to put him on the pedestal, because he really wasn't. He wasn't, you know, oh, you know, he was Nefter. He was an angel. He wasn't. Right. He really wasn't. He was so normal. He was so re regular. And I've said but it he so was, many but times. But he was full of life. He was, he really loved, loved his friends. He did everything for his friends. But, you know, we're talking about Davi, unfortunately, because that's, that's where right. we're so at. Right, so he, he's I put on the pedestal. my kids take care of all the friends. And I took care of, I don't want to talk about myself, but so... Well, we, you know, we Rock have a 50 50 uh, partnership. Right. He's over put here. on the pedestal now because he's no longer here. But the truth of the matter is, he fought with his brothers. Mm. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was, from all my children, I got the most phone calls from the school about him. <laughs> Give him out. I mean, literally. And I, I admire your authenticity, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I'm not joking. I mean, from Rabbi Eisenstark, from Rabbi First, from the secretaries, <laughs> they, they called me the most. To the point when I used to see the caller ID of my of my kid's school, I just, just ignored it. Just no, go. like, <laughs> and at one point I remember calling them and said, like, unless there's blood or broken bones, just don't call me. <laughs> Sounds like, like you have five boys. Yeah, yeah. like it, there's no yeah. point. Like you see him more Davis than I Bliss do. This was before my my oldest son's option. She was davening that she shouldn't have three kids in Pampas. You know, like, so, like so. they were they were a football team. They were a yeah. hockey team. They 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 were no one messed with the Steinmetz boys. They were. They were the it boys. It also seemed like he was a clever man. He, he was, was. He was a clever man. He was very smart. And he, but he knew how to, to, like, he wasn't because he smart made himself feel smarter with other kids. He went to yeshiva. He was almost three years by Rabbi Feigenbaum in Lakewood. And he, he got there. He didn't, that wasn't his first choice yeshiva. He ended up there, was Beshed. And you know what? He was, it was tremendous matzliach over there. He was there for almost three years. He was Rosh Hashiva's right hand man. Whatever they had to take care of, whether it was Hanukkah, Masibas, or Pums, he was used to do it. Like, he used to call me, Tati, we need to get some extra money because we just need a sound system to make it better. <laughs> or we got to order an extra, you know, some Mike's chicken. And, you know, like, he knew how to make it because he, he wanted Conscious. everybody to enjoy. And his Rosh Hashiv appreciated him also because he knew, he, they understood each other. Yes, he learned well, but he didn't, he wasn't the kind of show, but the Rosh would ask him, go, go, you know, I need you to, to, to learn with a Shrach HaBocha. He'll learn with a Shrach HaBocha. And, and the boy wouldn't have realized that, why is he learning? He, he wouldn't make him feel, oh, I know it all. No, we're learning together. And, and these stories. He was stories, a people's person. He yeah. truly loved his friends. Like, you know, when he went to Israel for the first time, he was coming from Canada, which was a green country. But all of his friends were coming from the United States, which was a red country. So his friends had to go into Badud. They had to go into quarantine. He did not. He's like, what the heck am I going to do when I get to Israel? I'm going to be the only kid, the only boy in Yerushalayim in my apartment. There's no way. So he decided, I'm also going into Badud. Wow. So he, could you yeah. imagine? He went. Man of the people. It, forget that. He went it was down a in the desert. Uh, in 110 went. degrees for 10 days. He went into Badud. He went Yama into quarantine. Uh, in like Yamamela. Yeah. In Engedi. And they, and they would give... Uh, the Shiro would give them outside. Give yes. outside. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. At night, because it was too hot to learn during yeah. the day. And he figured out a schedule where everyone had to take a shower at a certain time, because otherwise it was unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> like, they really, they had such a matzav. And then he said, like, Everything was amazing except for the food. The food was like <laughs> just you couldn't like do it. And so, for twenty one year old boys, uh, it wasn't boys. It wasn't uh, no. So yeah. he figured out 
from his older brother, who actually sponsored it. You can make a mishloach from restaurants, but not just for your room, because it's not fair, right? Like, it's just not cool to order yeah. just for your room. So he ordered food for the entire floor. <laughs> his whole bubble. And then I, I, the I, entire bubble got food. A delivery of food sponsored by his older brother. And he arranged it, because, like, it's only fun uh, if everyone's party. Hello, Tayman. Nothing less. Right. Yeah, the, the, whole, the funny part is, like, if, uh, he wasn't even supposed to be in the quarantine. No, but, he, like, but you're going to go. And he's the one who's organizing like the party. survive if he wasn't there. <laughs> but that was who he was. He, he loved to live. And he yeah. loved to party. And he enjoyed when everyone else partied with him. Like, he, he really when my took, oldest son got engaged, he was dying to come here for, you know, for, to come for the engagement. The rapes, you can't leave. You leave Israel, you're not coming back. It's complicated with the whole... Uh, with these shores, it was these very, shores, very... shores, finally, okay. He stayed there. He made an Israel. He made, he, made, he, made he, he made a party no, over... No, he was yelling. He was telling the mirror that it's okay because when you're going to come collecting, I'm giving a building to Briss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving a building to Mir because you are, yeah. couldn't get me in these shore. I'm only going to support Briss. <laughs> Like that was he, his line. He, he made a party in the in the embassy show. You know those deals are not too big. And he said whoever didn't have corona, about two hundred boys showed up, and whoever didn't have corona got it after this party. Yeah. <laughs> but but so this is what he, he, he wanted to have an engagement party for everybody. That he said, listen, so I can't make it there. We're, we're bringing the party here. You know the chusn wasn't there, but uh, yeah. but the simcha was the there. Simcha was there, hundred yeah. percent. Every yeah. you should know. Every Friday he would go to all the candy stores in uh, Geula because his apartment was in Meisharim, and he would buy the best and the nicest candies because Debbie was a nasher. He loves candy. I mean, cleaning his room for Pesach was a disaster. <laughs> and All those wrappers behind the bed. Yeah, the wrappers <laughs> behind the bed. Like, there was such a collection. And what he would do was, the boys all knew, all the kids knew, that every Shabbos afternoon, they would come to his merpesset, and he would throw down candies to them, all the kids, and they would all check the hachshur. And he always bought nash that had that would have a good hachshur, wow. so that he can share. And when he was nifter, my my son, who was um, ten or eleven at the time, my youngest, we were trying to find something on his level that he can do to perpetuate Avi's memory. And we're thinking, what would be something that he could, you know, that would be age appropriate. So we decided that every Thursday we would go to the supermarket, to the kosher supermarket, and he would buy, he would choose three bags of nash, and we put on each bag of nash a picture of Davi and says, say a bracha for Davi. Wow. And it says, Lila Nishmasi Sachar Tov Barish Ben Shlaima. And we give it to our Rabbitson, and she gives it out to different families in our community that can't afford to buy, you know, these nash. And that's what he does, just like his brother Davi. That's so nice. That's so beautiful. We'll be right back to this episode in just a minute. But you know what? Tisha B'Av is coming up. And I don't know what type of faster you are. Some people are great fasters. Some people are not great fasters. Some people feel awful after fast. Some people feel good. But regardless, Blue Glove Concierge is now servicing the upstate area. If you're upstate, they are servicing that area as, many, as well as many others. All you need to do is reach out to them. So Blue Glove Concierge offers medical care. But in addition to the medical care they offer, they also have the amazing drips. So Maybe you need an IV infusion of vitamins before the fast day. Maybe you need it after the fast day to get back into yourself, back into your schedule. You need to give a call or WhatsApp Blue Glove Concierge. That is 917-334-4134, 917-334-4134, or send them a message on WhatsApp. Again, it could be that you need some boost for Tishabov. You need a boost, a boost after Tishabov. Blue Glove Concierge offers that for you. Make sure to reach out to them. You can message them on Instagram. You can message them on WhatsApp or you give them a call. Whether you're upstate, you're in New York, New Jersey, wherever you are, they can have someone come to you and make sure that you are healthy, make sure that you are well, and make sure that you fast well as well. Enjoy the rest of this episode. You know, I, something I, I want to ask is, you know, there's obviously there's no shortage of different things that one can do for, you know, when, when they unfortunately lose a loved one, a child. You guys selected Ani Mamen. I'm curious why specifically it was this. Uh, it was Sorry, this I didn't select Ali Mamim. Ali Mamim selected me. This was right. the Uv's idea. I didn't take credit for it. I just, I, I, it hit so me on Shabbos. I said, I'm saying Ali Mamim for many years. Like I said, that morning when my, my son sent me the picture, I will have it to show it to you later, saying the Ali Mamim because I, I'm saying it anyway. And that's what helped keep us going. It's helping what us. What picture are you referring to? He took a picture of the Siddur saying an imam. You don't have to say an imam from the card. You can say from any Siddur in, in Ashkenaz, Sfad, in, you know, in the Sfadish verse, it's Shlosh uh, Karim. It's all the same. 13 principles of faith. And when you go for the book, you can see 
he'll explain it all. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not the rabbi. I just know one thing. We have to believe. And by believing without thinking in too much, it, it, it helps. It helps you get through hard times. Unfortunately, everybody has hard times. We had the biggest tragedy that could, somebody could ever go through, and nobody should ever, ever have to go through something like this. But we do have to live and try to be mechazik ourselves to be able to live for the But Zavi lived his life with the moon. I mean, yeah. you know, I, we, we've said this story. People have said this story. You know, Zavi had an electric bike in Israel. And everyone knows in Israel, if you don't lock up anything of value, it's gone. He never, ever locked up his bike. Now, you want to say that he was stupid? He probably was. <laughs> but he never locked his bike because he honestly, and this is how he lived his life. He truly believed that he needed his bike to get to yeshiva every day. And therefore, he didn't lock it up because Hashem knew he needed to get to yeshiva. Now, if you would tell me about this, about one of my other kids, I would say, uh-huh. But it was Davi. He left his bike unlocked every single night. And every single night, that bike was there the entire night. And when he got up in the morning, that bike was waiting to take him to Yeshiva. When he was Nifter, my other son, Svi, who was living there, inherited the bike. Now, Svi lived in Machal, and every night he locked up that bike because he knew he would not find that bike the next morning. And one morning he came down, and that bike was gone. Oh, gosh. Wow. Even, the lock was locked. broken. The lock was broken, and he was so mad. And he put a picture of the bike. That no, was the lock. The, the lock. I'm the, the, sorry. The lock. They left the lock. <laughs> Whatever. They, they the left bike. the lock. <laughs> <laughs> they left the lock. And he, they put a picture uh, of the, you know, of the, of the lock. And he, he's like, the bike's gone. And his brother's like, bro, where's your faith, bro? <laughs> wow. And, but that was Davi. Davi used to tell me things like, Don't worry, Hashem no, just go. Just he used to yell at you, give more like, tzedakah. Give, I said, Davi, we're giving, we're doing what really? we can. Really? He, he used to tell you I, to give more tzedakah? Yeah, uh, on every, all the time. Schaefer, his thing was always Schaefer, and you can ask all his friends. Davi was always like Schaefer, bride. Should, should be like, like I said, when he ordered this thing for Yamamela, he ordered for everybody, but he used to go to the deer and make a party. Ravchas. Ravchas. This Yerushalmi guy, he, I mean, this story was written up many times. It was in every magazine that wrote up about, you know, the 45 Kedoshim. His friends were walking with him in Meisharim, and this Yerushalmi guy waved to him, and his friend said, who is that? And Debbie said, I don't know. He said, what do you mean you don't know? I, I don't know. So said, why is he waving to you? Well, he has my credit card. Well, why does he have your credit card? Well, we were in the supermarket, and we were in the Makolet, and the guy didn't have enough money to pay for his groceries, so I gave him my credit card. And you out of your mind? Like, why would you give him your credit card? Well, he needed it more than I did. And if he needs money, like, what am I going to do? Like, Hashem knows he needs money. And we were like, when we heard the story, we were like, it's so, it was so typical, Davi. Like, that's who Davi was. You know, sometimes. He did it in Yerushalayim and he did it when he was in Lakewood also. There were some boys which, which, which were less fortunate and they needed extra things here and there. You used to take care of it. They didn't even know how it got where it came from. We very rarely and had I know to cover it from the, his bills. I know it from the Rosh Hashiva and from the Rebbeim. You know that Davi took care of this one, took care of that one. And then, like, it's I, striking to yeah. me that earlier you were describing him as ordinary and regular. And as I hear you sharing these, these stories and this, this nature that he had, what's occurring to me is that you clearly have an extraordinary home environment that you raised him in because These are this all is an extraordinary brothers. kid that you're describing. But all his brothers so are like this. <laughs> he's, we're, just, we're talking about Zavi because he's no longer with us. But the truth is, if you ask me about my Yuri or my Tzvi it's or my Akiva or you, Sasha or Swirli, we could say the same stories about them, but we don't have to talk about them. You had, said that, you had said that like, Davi was the most normal, but these stories aren't so normal. They're not normal, but they're, they're, they're not extra, they're, they're extraordinary. You know what it is also? We don't focus on, like, everybody wants, you know, you want to do things in life. I'm sure you do wonderful things, which you don't even realize because you, got, you continue with your life. You're doing mitzvahs and massive to everyone, and you go on, so you're not focused on it. Unfortunately, once your life stops, you start to go back and say, oh, he did that, you did this, you did that. So, you know, maybe we were focusing more on, 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 on we, we're trying, at the end of the day, we're living, we're, li we're all living and going through our challenges. And we want to learn and grow and be mechazek each other. This whole initiative started because this is what I wish to wanted. We're trying to bring it to the next level, and we have hundreds of thousands of people on board. It's not because I want it. Obviously, I want to do what I can for my sons and shomer. But but Klali soul is, needs it. Is hungry for it because I printed thirty thousand cards, and then 
they asked me for more cards is because people really want it. The Animamin book that came out, I'll tell you how this started. Um, this is actually the English version, which came out last year, written by Becheskel Elias. After we did this whole, you know, in the sifter way, we started Animamin. So the guy asked, uh, you know, maybe we can give Shio on it. What's Animamin? Because people don't know. You're saying it, but you don't know the background behind it. So he said, okay, Rabbi Elias is, uh, we'll give a Shia twice a week on it. And, you know, in the show, five minutes Shia, nothing, uh, you know, deep. And we, we opened a website just to, after to put it up there, animamin.net. And we uploaded it and art school somehow heard about it and things evolved. And I said, how about we write a book? So I work on the book. I said, if you can get it out for the first anniversary. So we worked very hard in getting it out. It came out last year, like Boyama. Gedalia. Gedalia's Alamets. This is the English book. And Baruch Hashem, we sold uh, over 10,000 copies. And now this year, we just came out in French. I know you guys don't talk French. Mm -hmm. but My wife speaks French. Okay, so there we go. She's from Belgium. Interesting. Oh, so is he. So am I. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, so we made the book in French now, and the message and we want to keep going. Uh, my, my goal is to have every anniversary a different language because we want to bring it out to the world. And we want to go in Yiddish, we want to go in Hebrew. I don't know which way we're going. We're in the middle of debating which, what's going to be what's next, the next year. What's the next language? But it, it, it's to reach Carly so And the feedback we're getting back... Gotta go Spanish. There's a lot of... Spanish, Spanish also? Well, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. Torah world in, in different it's, it's, places. It's and the letters that we get and... It, it's just incredible, you know. I, I should have brought actually the letter. I mean, it was signed by some of the people that I actually. It was it was funny because when I read the the letter, it arrived on the Friday in email. It was signed by ten women who finished the book, and Friday's the day where I do absolutely nothing. I have such PTSD because Friday was the day that that W's body was actually identified, and. So I literally sit on my couch. I do nothing. You want me to bake challah? Not a good day. You want me to bake cake? Not a good day. Baruch Hashem, she's very geschickt. And Thursday afternoon, in about two and a half hours, from when she finishes work for supper, she cooks up a storm. Yeah, we got the challahs, the meat, the kegel. We're good to go. Overnight kegel and daven. You should so think you're just ready by Friday. <laughs> yeah, but Friday. You're about to have people drop off food now. Or Shabbos. <laughs> oh, I didn't cook for a year. If you think that Shabbos happened in my house for a year, I am very lucky to have the most amazing group of friends Montreal and Kina. family because for one year we lived on takeout can, can take you tell I lost friends. a lot of weight <laughs> we lived on takeout and very good friends who dropped off food and cake because you guys have Uber Eats in Montreal or no we, we have Uber Eats yeah <laughs> we do but like in French no have... <laughs> yeah but no I, I seriously but a, a letter arrived on the on a Friday it was actually written by a, a mother of a boy who learned in yeshiva the same yeshiva that Zavi learned in and she wrote how her and her friends just finished reading the Sefer. They learned every Sunday for 15 to 20 minutes, a group of 10 women. And she wrote how it really transformed their lives. And it was just, the timing was so perfect, how it arrived on the Friday, how I actually looked at my phone on the Friday that, that I actually responded to the ding on my phone that an email arrived and I read the letter. And it was like, God sent me a kiss because he knew that I needed it. It was it was just so incredible how somebody strangers yeah, we're, we're getting they messages read that from book and it gives chizik to people. Yeah. It gives us chizik and it gives it, it's a two way street. Like people are telling me, thank you for giving me the opportunity to to grow. I said, thank you for giving us the chizik. It's every person that we know in my head, Dovi's on a ladder. Every animam is one step up. You know, it's just infinite yeah and people were getting i got a message last week for the book just came out the french version Some, somebody called that has a son living in montreal and is, they're originally from france and he had no idea of the background that the animan book actually comes out of montreal he said i bought this wonderful book in, in, in the bookstore in israel and, and you have to get it and he was going on and on and on about it and, and this guy says i actually i know who it is i mean he, he lives in the community and his father had no idea. And he, it's just, it's a really, it's an amazing book. It, I mean, the feedback we're getting back, again, if they sold that many thousands and thousands of books, they've got to be doing something right. Yeah. But I'm not it's in the book scroll. business. We're just, <laughs> we're just, we're just, you know, it's giving chizik, it's, it's getting chizik, and it's, 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 it's giving, like my wife, we said in the beginning, having the minapshita, minapshuta, 
Yeah, we went. You know, <laughs> Thank God you said pshita because yeah. <laughs> you said pshita. I was like, I'll tell you, we went. Pshita? Not this past year, but the year before, we were in Israel and we went to. I I don't remember who the person was. It doesn't even matter what his name was, but somebody says. You know, like I thought I was going to go to Hashem and Gale and he would have the answers. But of course, you know, everybody has the answers and everybody has a crystal ball because, yeah. you know, because we're all winning the lottery. And it's just it's an amazing thing how everyone has, you know, everyone knows someone that knows someone that has the answers. So we did go to somebody who was supposed to have the answers, but didn't. And we were sitting there and very patiently. And of course, you know, he looks at my son's name, Yisachar Tov Berish, and, you know, he asks us a bunch of questions. And of course, he says, do you have any questions? My, my question, why? And I'm waiting very patiently. And he looks up at me and he says, the only thing I could tell you, and he didn't know my son at all, and he didn't know my husband or myself. Yeah. Really. I've been looking for Rabun and Rabun. I mean, I'm looking, I've been going. And I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but it, it's, it's, I figure every move I go, every rabbi I go, whether it's Lipsish, Hasidish, Fajr, I go ask for the same book. So the time should be Koyach, Koyach, and Nachmu Koyach. We just need Koyach to keep going. Yes. I need answers. Going. He just needs Koyach. <laughs> so anyways, I, so his answer, it was very interesting to us what he told us, which kind of ties into the Animam theme is, he says, the only reason that Zavi was was one of the 45 Kedoshim, which was, he was kind of the only one who even went in that, that vein, was because he had the amuna that he had the belief that his tafkid was done. He understood with 100% certainty that he had done his, his job. And he understood that his neshama was ready his neshama knew that it was time and that he understood that Hashem was waiting for him and that it was ready to go because he believed. And I was like, we always said that Davi had this amuna. That was, mm. that was an answer, you know? And to me, it was, okay, no mother wants to hear that. Just yeah. let me just put that out there. Not an answer a mother wants to but, hear. But it's, when you see a lot of Rabbonim also, which they told us, when you see what you're doing things in Davis Chos, I mean, we're doing this whole Emuna campaign, it's because somebody really believed in his lifetime and did things, and then after his nifta, it's it keeps going. That it to resonates. prove that he re- wow. that he really that he really w- was part of it. Yeah, I, listen, I know that it's been a couple of weeks. Just please give me a break, all right? I, yeah, I, I, I know, I know. Normally I'm on time, all right? I, I, it's just, there's a lot going on right now. <sighs> okay, thank you. Hello? Yeah, put him through. Yeah, yeah, Justin, hey, listen, I, um, yeah, I know that it's late. I know that it's two weeks, all right? Just please give me a break. Um, I got an invoice coming in next next week. I should be able to get that to you, okay? Yeah. Uh, hello? We'll be right back to this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. But first, a quick message from our friends at Aleph Beta. Maybe it's Tisha B'Av right now when you're listening to this, or it's right before Tisha B'Av. Regardless, or maybe if, even if it's after Tisha B'Av, Aleph Beta has amazing Torah content for you. And there are so many questions that surround the nine days in Tisha B'Av. You know, why does Hashem let us suffer? How can we make Tisha B'Av feel relevant to us when this happened thousands of years ago? Well, those questions can be answered on the Aleph Beta Tisha B'Av content. So you need to go ahead and go to olivebeta.org. Rabbi Foreman, who's the founder of Olive Beta, he's one of my favorite guests that we've had on this podcast. 
He has amazing videos that delves into the deeper text behind Tish Above and finds a deeper meaning of the relevance of the day. Uh, we have a promo code for you and it's $18 off an annual premium subscription. You can use the code MEANINGFUL23. That's MEANINGFUL23 for $18 off. I have an Aleph Beta account for the year. I love it. The content is incredible. A lot of the videos are really cool, animated, and it's easy to watch, easy to digest, and you will learn a lot from it. So make sure you head to alephbeta.org and use promo code MEANINGFUL23. And that's not the only company we have a promo code for. You know we have a promo code for Collars & Co. So you know what? The nine days Tish Above is almost coming to an end. And you're like, you know what? I need new shirts. I need new shirts. And now I can buy new shirts. But where are you going to buy them from? Gearing up for Elul? Rosh Hashanah Kippur? You want to buy them from Collars & Co. That's where you want to buy them for. Hey, father-in-laws. You have a son-in-law? Buy him a Collars & Co. shirt. That is collarsandco.com. Use promo code MEANINGFUL for 15% off. That is code MEANINGFUL for 15% off. The firm collar, the soft shirt. Your son-in-law will love you for it. So make sure to purchase your son-in-law the best gift you can get him for the upcoming Yom Naram season. That is from collarsandco.com. Order yours today and enjoy the rest of this episode. What hit me when you shared that was it doesn't answer the why question, but it does define the what. Right. Defines what happened. Right. So as a mother, and, I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what's so what, what's hitting me like in the face right now is that there were forty five kedushim, kedushim. That forty five is is mem hey. That's that's the ma. That's the what. And the bracha that you keep saying that your husband was asking for is for kayach, and kayach ma chachma to have kayach powered by the forty five. Kedoshim, that's the chachma that emerges from a tragedy like this. Wow. You're oh, good. good shot on the spot. You're good. Well, the, Somebody made a gematria, 1462. And I'm in And I said, Sukhadov Beresh, plus 45, it's 1462. Wow. It was a 1462. I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have my phone in front of me. This is random people doing things. It's actually Yosef Dov Gestetner, our neighbor. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the Gestetner family. Very nice. Yeah. We're surrounded by them. Yeah. <laughs> Frontwards, backwards, sideways. So you asked me a question before, which I wanted to, uh, I lost my, uh, what did you just ask me? Um, We're on the mission. On, on, on the mission. And we were sitting Shiva. And my wife, you know, like saying, it's terrible what's going on and what happened. But unfortunately, other tragedies are going to happen. People are going to forget. I remember telling the Jews, I said, listen, I don't know what we're going to do. But I said one thing, there's not going to be anybody in the world who's not going to hear Davish Tanitz. That's what I said then. And in a way, we're going what we're doing. But where we're now, two years later, and again, we're doing it in his chus, yes, because we want to, but, but the, the chizik and the minute that we're getting and giving people, I went, like, I, I went to the Adir Torah event two weeks ago. Every third person was coming over to me and said, Mr. Sami, don't ask what we're saying on the mountain. Like, I felt after the Rabunim, I was like, uh, you know, everybody knew me. It's kind of I'm, hard to forget. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the Shiners. I remember him before. I'm like, I know you. <laughs> and, and again, we're bringing out the Animam. People are sending me clips of uh, singing Animam in, in random places, whether on the safari in Africa, whether they, you know, they're saying Animam, and whether they, it's by a wedding, or it's, it's, uh, it's you know, they go to Morocco to uh, Rabbi Aman Diwan, and... I, I got hundreds and hundreds of pictures and clips. They're going on trips. They're, 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 they're being mal and it's all you know over the world. It took me yeah. a full year to be able to hear the song Ani Mamim without cringing because it was such a trigger for me. Because during the Shiva, they came over um, and, and they were singing the song. I think it was Yasin oh, no, Hef. No, 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 no. This was, this, I think it was Yasin okay, Hef who this, actually I'm going to tell the you the story with, your, with your brother's name. I don't know if I wanted to say his name. Well. He's a good friend. He's we a good friend. No, we're going to take it. I'll, I'll tell you how to, anyway, I'm, I'm in the room. I'm sitting, uh, I'm sitting there and I see it's a full house. I mean, thousands of people came to me and then tons of boys. I'm saying, I'm thinking, can we sing one of Davi's favorite songs? Just like that. I should put in a joke in my head. And they started singing Animam and then. At the Shiva. And it went viral at the time. It was a Yeshiva. Well, yeah, I saw videos. It wasn't something I asked. I planned. We didn't say which song. And we actually sang two other songs. But the Animam and the song is actually stuck. And, there was a certain boy there, cut out, <laughs> and he told me afterwards he uh, he came to the shiva because he was very close to uh, my second son Tzvi. He got some very. He was diagnosed that day with. He was he was going for a party, but he had to. He had to. He felt you know because he was there for me. He had to come be Nachamavu. 
He said, the singing, the animamim there of everybody together, he said, it gave him such a koyach, he says, I'm going to fight it, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to do what I got to do. Gewalt. And this is by the shiva, which when we sang that animamim by the shiva at the time, that I felt, I told my kids, I said, Duffy's singing this with us. This is, this, we're, we're, we're singing it together. He's not fit with us physically, but he's with us. We are singing this together. And, I, and everything I do the whole time. But again, people think I could be crazy. My wife agrees. <laughs> I feel Duffy's not with us physically, unfortunately, we know that. But he's with us. So I'm doing stuff and I'm going for a hot show. I said, Duffy, I need your help. And I'm like, help me out here. Like, so... We're doing things in his chis because we want him his neshama to grow high and high. But he's 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 not physically with us, but he's with us. That's how I feel. So, something my uh, a relative of mine, he, he started Chabad in the valley. His name was Rabbi Josh Gordon. He's not he's no longer with us, but we used a clip of him recently. He was saying that when someone leaves this world, they don't they don't you know fly away to a place of we don't know. It's like in a house, they're one floor up. They're that's one it. floor up. That's you it. can't see them, but they can hear you, and sometimes you can even hear them. One floor up. That's all. That's all. That's all it is. It's one floor up. I I, I can relate. That's I, I think it's a little more than a floor, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's a bunch of men here. I'm feeling a little outnumbered, but I don't agree. Got me out of a speeding ticket uh, about six months ago. You know, so. I don't know. I'm not agreeing with this analogy. Sorry. <laughs> Objecting on the record. Yeah, sorry, uh, it's, it's no. What is it? What is it? What is it, what is it for you? It, it's not. I guess from a mother's perspective, yeah. it, it's it's not. It's really, really. He's not here with me. He's 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 not close by, and I I feel his absence. It's it's a part of me is missing. Yeah. It's a part of me was just ripped apart, ripped away. You know, you say animamim, you say so many things, but I don't think there's anybody who wants Mashiach more than the mother. Yeah. Wow. And and I I chas v'shalom chalila v'chas do not want to conflate my my feedback for insensitivity, but what's what's coming up for me as you share that is as you experience that lack and that absence, what's also evident is that Davi has activated a part of you that maybe wasn't. Right. So I honestly, you know, it's funny, like we discussed it as a group, you know, my friends and I, you know, that first year when COVID happened, March 2020, I think it was March, 2020, like when everybody was home those first few weeks, how we were so good, you know, everyone's families were home. We were, we were mothers, we were fathers, we were families, you know, nobody was going anywhere. We were literally, I mean, the world was coming apart. Armageddon, yeah. right? We, I mean, we actually had Minion the whole time. Right. And but I have a house full of boys <laughs> on my back porch to my neighbor's back porch. We had many. We're the only ones. You want the, the you want the you video. want the Mounties to come after you right now? No, no. Montreal. But what I'm trying to say, I, I'm very close to the square dine of Yochanan Vosna in Montreal. He's he's a tzaddik. He, he could be a rebbe. He is a rebbe. <laughs> and he said, For you sure. do whatever, whatever was the Medina lot. Those were his words. Whatever the government lets you do. So you so allowed to dabble on your minion. porch, but you couldn't Listen. go off your porch. <laughs> that was initially, you know. And then again, my boys at night they needed some uh, extra. Minion, you know, late night minion. So then there was a barbecue, but it was on the porch. That's okay. You no, know, but I'm what I'm trying to, to say is those first few weeks when, when, when we really didn't know what was going on and we were really, really like being very careful and social distancing and the world was coming to an end because nobody knew we were so good. I mean, family time was family time and we didn't go anywhere. I really thought Mashiach was coming. I mean, that Pesach, when nobody went anywhere, yeah. right? We cooked, we cleaned. I mean, there were no hotel programs. There wasn't, I mean, nobody went anywhere, right? The Sheikh was coming and then Pesach came and went. And then all of a sudden we became so lax and, and then Shavuos came and went and then everybody was like back to regular programming. It was like, the Sheikh didn't come. We were so good. We didn't speak Lush and Har because we had no time to speak Lush and Har. We were so busy with our families. We were yeah. busy taking care of everything. We had no cleaning help because who had cleaning help? Nobody, nobody came, right? We had no, to cook. No, we had no, to. Food we went through my wife's says- uh, you know, the, the boys have been in yeshiva for a few years now. So when they, I remember they telling my kids, like, everyone go out of the family room. You're using up my oxygen. <laughs> like, but we were so good then, right? We didn't have time to do anything wrong. Mashiach didn't come. 
like now we're so busy with our Animama initiative. We're so busy doing mitzvahs. We're so busy doing chesed. God, what, what more do you want from me? Like, what else do you want? I've, I've done everything. I've sacrificed. I've given you the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. What more do you want from me? I, I've, I've tried everything. I've done everything. Give me a manual. Tell me what you want me to do. Because I've, I've tried to do all the mitzvahs. I've tried to dab and I've tried to say to hell. And I've, I've tried to, to be the best I can. You, you, not that you try, that you're doing. And it just it piles up there. So you, you have credit. It's, it's not that we're doing when, when I'm saying it, we're talking here, but for anybody, when you're saying you do mitzvahs and mitzvahs, you're saying to him, you just, it's, you know, yeah, you're, you're, you're building asking. a bank account up there. Yeah. So we don't understand everything that what Hashem is doing. And yes, you're davening and you're wanting and, and, and you're doing all these things because we really want Mashiach to come and, and to have Kyle to understand. Everything that happened, we don't know. We, so I after, remember after asking Mashiach's Rabbi Reisman. Say, this, is, this is what happened. This is why, but... I asked Rabbi Reisman uh, after this happened. Uh, I think it was Rabbi yeah. Reisman. Mm-hmm. I said, Rabbi Reisman, we were like that normal family. We really were. We had a house, Bar Hashem. We have a nice big house. We opened up our house to any tzedakah organization that needs any kind of parlor meeting. It's in our house. You need a tea party for the school. It's in our house. You need anything that needs to be done. It's in our house. You need a date, date from my house. You need me to make you supper after your date? I'll make you supper after, after. like literally. Anything that needs to be done gets done from 1960 Barclay. We do everything. We don't really care. It's an open door policy. You need a place to eat for Shabbos? Come eat by us. You need a place to sleep? Come sleep by us. We were so regular. We were so normal. We did all the right things. And like, seriously, you had to choose us? Like, I don't get it. We did everything right. Then, then during Shiva, I remember yelling at my children, don't you dare be nice to anyone. No one is allowed to be nice. At, no more mitzvos. Do not do any more mitzvos. If you do any more mitzvos, we're going to get punished. No one's allowed to be nice. No one's allowed to do more. Until he started yelling at me, you're crazy. <laughs> you are the crazy woman. But uh, like, uh, what, like, I don't even know what's right and what's wrong anymore sometimes. Come back to the point. The way a mother feels, the way she feels, which took me a while to understand that also. Yeah. Because as parents, we build together, we build a home together, and Lo Hashem, I feel we have the best kids in the world. But as a mother, I could not, I didn't understand her until recently. And, uh, you know, it took me, like, for her to understand the animami part and the way I'm feeling, it took me, it's, uh, I also didn't understand her. But when I spoke to, you know, Abuna Moses, they explained to me, a mother has a physical relationship to a child. She carried the child for nine months. She gave birth to the child. She took him to all the doctor's appointments. She's feeding him. She's clothing. I mean, Yes, the husband is there, but he's I went to there. PTA. <laughs> ah. She's there. <laughs> PTA is a separate conversation. <laughs> but she's there as, as, a, as a physical thing. So it's, when she says she has something physically cut out of her, it's true. She has a hole in her heart. As a father, you, yes, you're there for your kids. You want the best things you can do, but you're more there in, in, in a spiritual level. You want them to do well. You want them to, yes, you want to provide for the family. You want them to learn. And, and when, when a, a tragedy of this magnitude happens, you still want to do for your child the best you can. And you, and you continue to try to do whatever you could do. But as a mother, you're not, you, you can't do the physical thing anymore. And when you say it's missing, yes, it's really missing. It's missing to all of us. But as a mother, you feel a hundred times worse than your father. As, as, as a couple, um, you being the, you know, I feel Dovi here with me. And you being the, this is, this is brutal. This is cut out for uh, me. For many for for a long time, I was the wife of the Animami man. Yeah, <laughs> that that was just my title. I, uh, I'm just the wife of the uh, Animami uh, man. But but really, you know, your feelings are at the table, and and I just wonder, as a couple, how you how you balance it, and how you. Uh, cause I, it's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, we, we we've we've learned that I smile a lot, and mm-hmm. and I listen to people, and I acknowledge. You know, like I said, it took me a full year to be able to say the words animamu. I, when I heard them, I would cringe. It was such a trigger to me because it just brought me back to the Shiva. I, I couldn't hear those words. Yeah. Like I kept hearing them sing that song and it was like, why? Why? But after a year, I was able to hear the words. Now I could actually be in the same room when the music's playing. Um, uh-huh. Even the car, right? It, it, like I used to make him shut the music. Like mm. if I heard the words "animam," I'm like, shut it. And for me, every time I hear "animam," I just it warms my heart. I just 
And to me, I'm like, shut it. Yeah. But now I could now so now like I, the heat and the AC and a woman's on a men's side in the car. Right. So now now I'm much better. Like I said, I'm a work in progress. Um, but now I've learned that people really, really like they they just they say on imamim and they're not doing it for Dovey. It makes their day so much better. And the fact that it's helping them and they're growing from it, it's helping me. Yeah. So the truth of the matter is, as much as I, I, I'm happy that they're doing it for Dovey, but the, the fact that they're feeling so much better about themselves, that's healing for me. Yeah, I was going to highlight before something that your husband said, that the 10,000 printings and then we need more and it's 30,000, it's 200,000. There's very clearly a thirst and a yearning to have this in their life. A hundred percent. It's not doing, it used to be do it for Dovey. Now it's do it for Dovey, but do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It'll change your life one ninety seconds at a time. It's, it's no, of course we want you to do it for Dovey because it's Lila Nishma's Dovey, but by doing it, those 90 seconds, it's life altering. It it's life changing. For the whole yeah. I had a, a random guy came over to me last week. I can't remember where I met him. He says, You don't know me. I'm 48 years old. But my, I'm saying, Ani Mamim, since you started this whole initiative, my wife, my kids were saying, and it makes us as a family better. It gives, it's a strange, a random guy. And I have this on a weekly basis. No matter where I go, I could be in Israel, I could be waiting for, for you know, in the airport, I'm sitting, in the, you know, waiting for my flight. And the guy comes, I, 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 Are you Mr. Simons? You know, I'm saying, Ani Mamim. Again, and I, I said, I believe it's okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was like, sometimes they say, I'm sorry, I forgot to say it today. I said, it's okay. Say no. We're good. <laughs> it's never wow. too late. It's true. Uh, I want to highlight also how, how compassionate you're being to your wife in this conversation. And I, I gather just in your relationship that you're right now or your predisposition, your natural default might not be exactly on the same inflection point on the spectrum. Of a Muna Pshuta. And <laughs> yeah. Pshita. And and you're sharing, you know, very openly and vulnerably about your journey and your growth in this area. But I wanna shift that gear for a moment and invite you to share where that natural Amina Pshita, like where is that coming from? Like it's it's so overflowing from you, just sitting in your presence. Can I like just tell so you where clear. I see that? As like when you want to say it's Siga Kiminer, somebody who came into the family. I came into the family 27 years ago and I met his grandfather. My father's father. His father's father. Hello, Hello, I met him. And in one second, I was able to identify this man who survived the war was just a personality. He was larger than life. There was just no two ways about him. You know, when you say, just a pasha to yid, simple, a, a uncomplicated. A minute, a minute, I mean, I'm the, I'm the oldest grandchild. So all the stories, like my youngest first cousins, they don't remember all this because you know, I was, my father's the oldest, I'm the oldest uh, grandchild. So it, he used to tell us stories from, from the war and growing up. And he looks like his grandfather <laughs> and he is his grandfather. He's his grandfather reincarnated. It is, it's uncanny, but this is, this is where he comes from. It's wow. it's unbelievable. I met his grandfather and I understand where my husband comes from because it's in his bones. It's it's part of who he is. It's an incredible thing to see. It's it's passed through the generations. It's, my it's unbelievable. Is, I, I mean I remember growing up when it was a bris of a mitzvah uh, uh, in the weddings, not because it was uh, I mean I was the first one getting married. He used to stand there and he used to, he, well, he didn't talk too much. He said, Dank Hashem is Ruch, Ketosh Tal Yiddish Dor. And, you know, and then my grandma says, like, too many things. I'm like, thanking the Ibishes for, for being who we are, that we have a Yiddish kids and we're able to do that. And my grandma says, oh man, and that was, and, and he meant it so much. Any Rebbe used to come to, I mean, grew up in Antwerp. So he used to come, like, he was, he was, he got big listen for this Kalender Rebbe, the previous Kalender Rebbe in, in Romania still. And he used to tell us the stories and, Again, I'm not going to go for the stories because I'm going to be here for another three hours. But just with the Skalena Rebbe, the, 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 not the, not, I'm not talking about the, um, not Rabbi Shayanko, but Rabbi his Shayanko's grandfather. Father, yeah, no, his grand, the Skalena Rebbe's grandfather, that's my grandfather, uh, but when his son came, uh, to Antwerp, so 
the Gabu used to take away the chess because he would be sitting with the Rebbe for hours and just going wow. reminiscing yeah. and uh, but but he really had a minute sheet from the, there was no like my I remember my youngest sister which is 40 years old today she she remembers my grandfather his best friend was of Maya and, and when she was in seminary she finally realized he's talking about Maya Balanes Every two minutes, like for him, he needed something. Okay, guy, it's a Meyer. Come and talk to me, it's a Meyer. He's a Meyer. Like you have a problem, this is going to a Meyer. Ich verstehe nicht. So you know, for him, a Meyer Balanes. It's it's like you have a problem right away. You give it a Meyer, and it's it's going to be okay. And you know, those are the kind of stories we grew up with. So so I guess you know, it does That's does. That's where it comes from. Um, it's inborn. Mm-hmm. Well, the last question I I have for you too. Or I guess you hit the road. You go back to Montreal tonight. Is that the plan? No, 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 no. We're gonna spend uh, Shabbos in Muncie. Okay, very nice. Our children. Beautiful. So I, a little bit of a tough question, but you know what? Mitzvah Mashiach should come now. 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 Right now. I on the way I, to the ribbon, sir. On the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I want to ask you know the mama first, and then to the papa. You know, Mashiach comes. Mitzvah Tchias Mesim. You get to you know be re- reunited with your son Davi. What's the What's the first thing? The first thing that you you want to tell him, you know, it's interesting. Um, we were at a Shabbaton, and I don't know who it was, but somebody said that people who who have lost children, they are the first ones. They're at the front lines to greet Mashiach because they get to get reunited with their children first. It's brought down. I don't know exactly what the where it is, what the Chazal is, but they actually are the first ones. So, you know, I will be. Ready and waiting. Um, what, what, what question do I have for Duffy? What are you saying? The first thing you'll 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 you'll, you'll want to tell him. I miss you. Just I miss you. We all do. It's not the same. Yeah. How about you? I miss you, but we never forgot you. We don't forget. Because, because I, again, I, for me, it's part of my life. Every second, everything I do, I think of more things to do with Davis. Like, I'm doing things with him, together with him. So, I physically miss him. And sometimes, you know, when you see certain things, that, like you say, there's certain things that triggers you. And, like, yesterday, we're going for old videos. We found this graduation video. So he, I mean, he was a kibitzer. Yeah. So he was, uh, he, he was, he was the I don't say valedictorian because we're not such a fancy uh, school. <laughs> but he, he got, he was representing the class. Everybody gave a speech in English, French, and Yiddish. <laughs> so he gave the Yiddish part. As he's finishing his speech, he's thanking all the rebbeim and my wife's uh, parents live in Montreal. My in-laws are there. So he says, as he's thanking, but he also said, "I didn't forget about it." <laughs> he wants me to remind him. You know, like he would throw jokes. That's 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 who he was. But uh, we definitely we definitely miss him. I mean, beyond. But when we when we see things that are done in his chiz, what people are doing, the world is doing, it it, it warms our heart. It, it gives me chizik. That's what gives me courage to keep going. Um, I have. Crazy ideas that I want to do. I don't know if you want me to go into that, but uh, we'll be here for hours. Rish Hashem, Rish Hashem. We just gonna, I just gonna keep. But that's what I'm saying. Any rep I go to, koyach, koyach, nachem And I, and I don't discriminate. The Rosh Hashivas, the Litzvah Shagad. I ask them the same book, and I tell them that I ask the rebbes. I'm asking for the same book, and when it comes to Sfat Shurab, same thing. And we're so koyach, koyach, what pam koyach? And Rosh Hashem, they give me the same book, and I wish to help. We should. Before you cut us off, Nachi. Yeah. I want to ask you to flip it and give us a bracha. Me? Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to give bruchas. You're not a pshita yid. I was going for push it. I got right, yeah. Uh, in the schis that what you guys are doing, because at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're here as, we're here on a chizik on mission, and to give a minute pshita, that's it. It's simple just to believe. Not to understand. You should have Kayach to continue doing what you're doing because you guys are amazing. You're just spreading so much awareness and bringing all Israel together and just giving everyone so much hope and 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 just. The Metro Hashem is going to come. We're going to need somebody to 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 help. He guided. We'll have some entertainment as Olivia are singing. The kind of getting ready. Me and Mama will be sitting there. We'll be right back. I don't know, dude. I'm going to be singing with them. (laughs) You're a lady. I'm not a lady. You're a lady. I think you're going to be muted. 
And I want to give you a bruch of hagefen. Hatzlocha, gezen, panos, anachas, you and uh, your, your families. families. Amen. 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 Mashiach. 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 We're ready. We're waiting. We're, we're, we're at the front lines. We're at the front lines. Yes. Thank you so much. Sometimes we feel closer, and, you know, like we get pushed back a little, so we just got to... Shift. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Meaningful People Podcast. Of course, like we mentioned, you go in uh, a book from the Ani Maman Initiative. Uh, in the description and the show notes of this episode are the details of how you can win those books. But really appreciate you listening to this episode. And I hope that if this you're listening to this before Tishbov, you have an easy fast, you have a meaningful fast. And it should be the last one. And this year, Tishbov should be a holiday. And of course, Meaningful Minute has a lot of programming coming out for Tishbov. So stay tuned to our WhatsApp status. The link is in the, sh- in the description, in the show notes. Stay tuned to our Instagram. And we'll be putting out a debut episode for season three of the Two Cents podcast. So stay close, stay, your, keep your eye on this space on Apple or Spotify. Subscribe to Two Cents podcast and you will see an amazing episode for Tisha Bav. Thank you so much. Have a great week, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video from Meaningful Minute. We have so much more content for you. You may like this. You may like this. Take your pick. Let us know what you think.